Well, the Utes took the opening drive here in the second half, marched at 69 yards in 10 plays. It only took them 244 to get there. Eddie Johnson, a five-yard run through the left side, and that's the difference in the ball game. Scott Barrick, if you have just joined us along our Aztec football network, has gone the entire way. Jimmy Ray has just come into the ball game, trying to get out. Is Dennis Airy? Barrick looking near side, throws. Airy's got it. Turns around, heads upfield, still on his feet at the 42-yard line. What a shot Dennis Airy took! Stayed on his feet and was finally knocked down by Greg Smith. How many guys hit him, Dave? You got a calculator? He really got nailed. Dennis Airy, out of the same high school that produced Carl Harry, who's the offensive uh, wide receiver for Utah, Fountain Valley High, and watch. Harry, good pass, 22. That is Levon Edwards. Gives him a shot, but Harry bounces off. Bounced off three tacklers before the fourth could get to him. Harry checks out to catch his breath. Trip wide receivers for the Aztecs. Nobody in the backfield. Barrick looks right. Under pressure. Throws, and it is incomplete. Aztecs catch a heck of a break there. Could have been called for intentional grounding. The referee looking right at it did not throw the flag. Frank Bonifacio, great pressure there. And the pros, this would be in the grasp. They don't have that rule in college football, but there was a case the Utes could make for intentional grounding. Glad they don't have that rule. Are the Utes making wholesale changes? They've got their nickel package in on second and ten. They're showing blitz. Here they come. Hewitt's got the football. And he's got no one anywhere. Garland Harris. Wow. The Utes in a zone defense. And a deep zone at that. Here comes Rowe on the reverse. He's got a blocker in front. Out near the 50-yard line. Spins and is near the first down. Yep. Setbacks. Jennings now in Hewitt. Play action. Barrett. Throws. It is caught by Broom. Still on his feet at the 30-yard line and dives out of bounds at the 29. Three wide receivers for San Diego State. Man-to-man -man defense for the Utah. Barrett saw it. Throws to Gilbert. He's one-on-one -on -one now with Edwards. He takes him out of bounds. Yards. Gilbert wide left again. The Utes in a man-to-man. -man. It is Hewitt. At the seven, and he has got the lone Aztec touchdown. There's Hewitt again, and again the Utes were blitzing. Eric Jacobson, Dennis Airy wide right. Monty Gilbert wide to the left. Eric looking at Gilbert. Now wants Gilbert to go deep. Eric will get away. It is Bonifacio. Let's it sail wide open. Touchdown, Aztecs! Dennis Airy, his first touchdown of the year. Ackerson boots the point after. And with 8.04 to play in the third quarter here at Rice Stadium in Salt Lake City, we are tied at 17. And just take a look. Goes back against the green, and wide open is the junior from Fountain Valley, Dennis Airy. We're tied at 17. We'll return to Salt Lake City with more yards in 10 plays. First down. Mitchell, right down the middle, it is caught by Kurt Jones. Jones came into this ball game with 29 catches and four touchdowns. In motion, it's Jones. By action, Mitchell looking for Jones again, but he's going for Harry. He is wide open, and it is knocked away by Casey Copeland. Here's now that man right there entered the ball game one yard behind Aztec great Todd Santos as the most prolific sophomore pastor in the Western Athletic Conference coming in. Look at that number right there, 257 more today. Jones in motion now, reverses, comes to the near side. Mitchell looking left, there's the swing, and Johnson's got it. And he is out of bounds. There's Johnson, big hole, he's at the five, and dives in near the four. And carrying him down there, Pio Sacapolatelli. Setback is Barrett, big lumbering fullback. He has got the football, and he is met head on at the three. Gonna be worthy. Fourth down and less than one. Mitchell. Touchdown, Utes. What a call. Pardon me, it is Brian Barrow. He 
took the snap from center. They will use Barrow in situations like that, and why not? When you're six foot, 226 pounds. Two nights to Thursday night, Sports Arena. Full house, great crowd, highly ranked team. North Carolina, tremendous tradition, coming to town, ranked fifth and seventh in the country. Uh, and people may ask, how did you get North Carolina to come here? They don't have to go anywhere. They can stay home. <laughs> no, that's true. But uh, they had a return game with Pepperdine, and so they called here to pick up a second game on the trip west. And so they called us up, and, uh, and uh, we were able to put together the game. And, and that's good for our program and uh, created some interest and um, you know hopefully that uh, we'll have a number of big events in basketball here in the next few years Ron. all right well it was a fun night at the arena for those of you who missed it or got shut out mr dandy big time basketball game over 13,000 on hands the aztecs meet north carolina tar heels and right off the bat you could tell the intensity level was up for san diego state there's sam with a yeah. inside moving and mitch yeah, nice put back by mitch mcmullen and, uh, you know, we had better passing. Uh, you know, you have to be a good pass and catch basketball team against North Carolina. And defensive error there, you cannot leave Chilcott loose on a, a nice pass, uh, you know, from uh, Michael Best to Sean Bell. And that's what, uh, that's what we have to do. Uh, you know, we just have to, uh, you know, really pass and catch against a team like this. And, uh, you know, we're doing a good job early in the game. Uh, you know, we really control the game uh, offensively and defensively, you know, actually for almost 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the tempo of the game uh, eventually uh, cost us so much attrition uh, with foul trouble that uh, we ended up, uh, you know, just with too many guys out of the game in crunch time. But uh, I was very proud of our guys' effort. Well, I thought they played hard and tried to, by and large, play within themselves. Yeah, they, they did, and and, and uh, you have to give North Carolina credit because uh, they're a pretty good basketball team, and they had every chance to fold, and, and uh, they played with a lot of confidence and really just stayed after it. But uh, I thought Brian Williams had a great basketball yes. game. You know. Now, he was able to penetrate a yeah. lot, which helped you. Well, we, we thought, you, you know, see, right there we had trouble defending on the blocks. Uh, uh, they're bigger than we are, and so you can't play behind and let them catch that deep on the block. And so, uh, particularly when we got in foul trouble, our younger guys had tremendous problems uh, defending the bigger, stronger North Carolina players. Uh, back cut, uh, you alluded to that earlier. Uh, we had, uh, you know, several players uh, that uh, got back cut. Uh, you know, they have a very sophisticated uh, uh, screening game. And so uh, they, they back cut us a number of times, uh, something maybe we need to put in our offense. <laughs> now, they were willing to gamble like that on traps, leaving somebody open. Well, you, you know, that's, that's the thing, is, and that forced the tempo. And, uh, and so we, uh, you know, we thought that they, we thought they'd have a hell of a time guarding us, uh, you know, because we do have quickness and we can penetrate, and uh, we have the ability to pass the ball. Uh, sometimes better than other nights, but you know, uh, on this particular occasion, I, I thought we, I thought we uh, passed the ball and found the open man very well. Good drive baseline. Yeah, nice tip by Mitch McMullen again. And uh, you know, I just hope that I just hope that we can that we can uh, uh, gain confidence in this game and, and we can start playing better. Now, Mitch gave in to uh, J.R. Reed there because Mitch had four fouls at that point in time, and uh, we had to play a little, little tender and try and keep him in the game. But uh, J.R. wanted it because he would go out to the high post there. Yeah, and and, and we had to uh, we had to keep him from getting the ball out there, and uh, you know, and then dribbling back down in low. Now, Michael Best, I thought shooting had a little more rhythm than he's had in recent games. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think you're right. And, uh, uh, you know, he still hasn't had the shooting touch but, that yeah. we've seen. Uh, no one has seen the, the real Michael Best yet. It comes in spurts. It, seems it comes like. in spurts. But I think that, uh, you know, it, it's been a while since he's played. And, and he really has to get back in sync and gain some confidence. And uh, as he does that, he's such an unselfish player that as, as he learns when to pass and when to, you know, settle down, just take the shot.